Welcome. In this video, we're going to run you through the basic functions of Emphasis, our new mastering limiter plugin. We'll show you some easy wins with Emphasis first, then explain the underlying concepts of Emphasis, and finally, we'll consider its display and controls in depth. Of course, we'll also demonstrate some of the reasons why you would choose it over something like Fruity Limiter or Maximus on the master. Emphasis makes your music sound louder, clearer and more polished. It does this by carefully boosting the overall volume and shaping the dynamics in three stages, which we'll look at later, so your track sounds powerful without losing its original character or causing unwanted distortion. You can use emphasis to make your song sound more professional and polished, increase loudness while keeping the sound clean without obvious distortion, and control how punchy or smooth your track feels. By default, Emphasis opens in an automatic versatile mode, with settings that apply to most music. Just enable level matching and drive the input gain until you hear artifacts. Then turn off level matching, check if that is the loudness you want, and export. If you have to boost more than 10 decibels, your mix is most likely not loud enough in the first place. So, settings above that are most useful for particularly quiet material. Single Band Processing While throughout the years the digital audio world has demanded ever more complex plugins and for a while every new effect particularly mastering limiters, needed to be multi-band or even spectral processing to be considered worth using, it seems that this trend is over now, at least for mastering limiters. And so, Emphasis relies on affecting the entire frequency spectrum of the input signal the same way. The benefit of this is that the interdependency of transients in different frequency ranges stays present in the output or shorter, it does not mess with the spectral balance of your already mixed down music, or even shorter than that, it is harder to mess up versus multiband processing. Multi-stage design. Another widely known development in mastering limiter design is a multi-stage approach, where the gain reduction of the limiter is the sum of the gain reduction of two or more stages of dynamics processing. In Emphasis case, for the most part, there are three dynamics processing steps involved until you see their combined gain reduction in the metering here. Two of these stages are also available to look at individually in the dynamics plot here. More on that later. The first stage is a clean limiter, with its attributes and parameter ranges set in a way that it basically never adds any audible distortion. Think of this like a fruity limiter with a long look ahead and release. You can crank the signal up a lot, but you won't ever change individual waveforms as it reacts too slowly for that, ergo no distortion. That can raise the signal up until the input regularly hits the ceiling. Now, because of the long variables, it is hard to squeeze significant loudness out of the signal this way. This is why Emphasis' second stage is a dedicated shaping limiter in series with all-round tighter parameter ranges that can introduce wave shaping distortion or even clipping. Because it's quick enough to react to microdynamics. This stage can be controlled with the hardness knob here and behaves like a well-tuned mix of fruity limiters limiting with short time variables and fruity wave shaper. 
This is also where the oversampling happens, access that here, to contain any aliasing from the distortion. And the third stage is a brick wall limiter, designed to get rid of any intersample peaks that the distortion from the second stage introduced. That is the true peak limiting stage. True peak measurements adhere to a set of often revised recommendations by the International Telecommunication Union, ITU BS 1770. This is as close as you're going to get to an actual standard in the digital audio world. And as per the spec, when you turn the true peak option on in emphasis, this will always oversample the signal to reach a minimum sample rate of 192 kHz and process any overshoots in a finite impulse response a rolling buffer in which it can see all samples inside before they must be processed, guaranteeing true peak accuracy. Basic functions. Let's talk about the display first. Helps to know what you're actually looking at. You'll see your output signal represented by the gray waveform in the display. Two gain reduction plots, one each for left and right channels, are overlaid on top of it as soon as you're doing gain reduction. These plots are represented in the gain reduction metering on the right too. The orange section refers to clean limiting, and the red section is what's affected by wave shaping, so the first and second stages. Same for the light plot down here. Currently, this is set to measure integrated LUFs, and the meter on the very right of the plugin is 2. You can change that in the options menu here. On the big meters in the center of the metering panel, light gray shows output RMS, dark gray shows output peak level, and red shows clipped signals. Your output gain decides the ceiling on the graph here. So now you know what's in the audio path and what you're seeing of it. But what do the knobs and buttons actually do? Input and output gain are self-explanatory. You can select how much to boost your signal into the limiter and your final output level after limiting. Same with the routing controls. They let you select whether to process in left-right or mid-side mode and how much the processing can differ on each channel based on the linking amount knob here. Bear in mind that choosing mid-side mode can lead to more distortion than left-right mode in some cases. Here's where it gets spicy, and if you've stuck around for this long, it's probably not a surprise to you that these controls in the enhancement panel here are macros, meaning they each control more than one aspect of the audio path. The mode selector here sets parameter ranges and affects the signal detection for the first stage and its parameters. There are two adaptive ones and two manual ones. You'll notice when an adaptive mode is set, the emphasis parameter here is unavailable as it's set automatically. We're going to talk about individual modes later as it's important to know what the other controls do before we go into that. Emphasis amount affects the first stage. Specifically, it determines the overshooting amount, i.e. how much of the signal is allowed past the threshold, how quickly it reaches the gain reduction target, and how fast it recovers from it. These parameters are mapped so that higher values of emphasis result in stronger shaping of the peaks and more intense dynamics, while lower values result in slower gain reduction and retain more of the source dynamics. Envelope affects the shape of the gain reduction curves, statically and program dependent. Higher numbers increase the S-shaped curvature of both attack and release, resulting in exponential movement in the gain reduction curves. They emphasize a smaller portion of the transients, creating stronger dynamic shifts. Lower numbers produce a more linear dynamic response, prioritizing louder results by emphasizing a broader portion of the transients. Hardness controls the transparency of the shaping limiter stage, functioning similarly to the knee parameter in a compressor. It offers 10 steps, ranging from 0, completely clean with no clipping limiting applied, to 9, maximum hardness, where the second stage effectively hard clips the signal.
Now let's get into the modes. Versatile, as the name suggests, is a compromise between loudness and transparency. Even when using high hardness settings, it prevents strong distortion in sustained sounds, where shaping creates the most audible artifacts, while it allows for saturation on transients to maximize loudness and presence. Loud is designed for maximum loudness. While it also takes some care to reduce distortion on sustained sounds, this mode can apply considerable saturation and reduce the overall dynamics, pushing everything towards the ceiling. You will hear the distortion in this if you are the turn it up to 11 type. Transient emphasizes transients, while it's possible to maintain sustained signals completely untouched by distortion. When used gently with moderate emphasis values, remember emphasis controls the first limiter stage. It will sharpen impacts and drum sounds. When pushing the emphasis parameter up, it boosts loudness and body by shaping a wider portion of the signal after the transient. Steady affects signals above a threshold regardless of whether they are detected as transient or sustained. When the emphasis parameter is all the way up, this algorithm is no different to a saturator which can be adjusted via the hardness setting. It can be driven arbitrarily via the input gain. With smaller emphasis settings, the general saturation amount is reduced. Other useful controls are lock, which enables switching presets without your gain settings being undone. Bypass, which is a true bypass that is latency compensated to match the original, so no clicks and pops when enabling it. Then there is Delta, which automatically subtracts the input signal from the output signal and allows you to listen to the difference in isolation. And most importantly, level matching, which we touched on earlier, which lets you listen to your post-limiter audio at roughly the same level that it comes into the plugin with, so you don't fall for the louder is better trap. And finally, there's a low latency option in the lower right options menu that we haven't talked about yet. This will reduce the plugin latency by 50 milliseconds, but also make the first limiting stage less accurate as a result. When you're recording and emphasis is on the master, this can help with monitoring your audio, but in most cases we would recommend leaving that off. If you need zero latency in your audio chain, it's better to disable the plugin itself in the mixer. And that's all you need to know about emphasis. Now you're equipped to use it to give your productions that final push they need, or even a little more than that. Don't forget to check out the video description for a link to the manual, important documents mentioned in this video, and of course, the demo projects we made for this video. Happy music making.